Yeah, what's poppin' guys? You got your boy Nandra here. Welcome to another video. So for this video, I'm actually gonna, get, I'm actually gonna be showing you guys my GP runs. Now I did manage to get 5-0 after a number of blood sweat tears in three in two and one, two, three, and then multiple three twos. And I figured I would go ahead and actually show you guys the show you guys the games just because you know maybe you guys can learn something from it. So going into GP, I, I, I like I knew I was going to play Dragon 100 percent I um but it, but ironically enough, or or I guess interestingly enough, I actually did not get to play that much dragon. I only played it once, and then I actually just stuck with Shadow, just because I know that like some people told me, okay, well Shadow's like really really good, and well this is a format I do not play that much. I decided to go ahead and just like defer to them, um, which is you know always good. Just you know uh, never go ahead and like think like you know like you're always like the smartest person in the room. Anyway, so this is actually the deck I used. Now it took me a while to actually piece this together. Because I actually had to go ahead and watch and go ahead and like rewatch the VOD in order to figure this out. But yeah, this is the draft I got. Um, what the thing says in the title is actually what I'm missing from this. I so I didn't have new Saradwin. I did not have a a Lord Death Skull, and I did not ha I did not own Spirit Cycle. Um, but this is like the thirty that I used. As you can see, it, it looks you know it looks pretty decent. It, you know, like it has like some nice nice things going on with it. So. I figured the way I, would, I figured that the way I would do this is that like because my replays usually usually take a while to talk about uh, just because I'm, I'm kind of like you know long long and drawn out I would go ahead and show you guys about two games each and then save the game five or really the game four but that's what we'll, we'll talk about later and save the game five for its own separate game so we'll go ahead and get on to the first game this game is for Forest Craft now I'm gonna be honest with you when GP like expect to play versus people of different skill levels however. When you, if you play GP at, at, at certain times of day, you'll, you'll get people with lower skill levels they play against. Especially, especially if you play on day one. Especially if you play on day one. So as you see here, my first, my first opponent is, I believe, I believe that's the the thing for A rank, right? It might be for B rank. I don't remember. Anyway, he's uh, again like it, the, the, it doesn't matter. The point is that he's like one of the lower ranks. So I go ahead and I actually kept the. I actually got the Hells and Leisha just because I thought that I thought that'd be pretty solid. No, I didn't really have as many two drops as I would have liked. So keeping that as a, as a bit greedy, but I decided to go for it and I got rewarded. Now, here we have to go ahead and check the mulligans. Sorry about that. We have to go ahead and check the mulligans. We see that he drew two cards, so we, so we know he kept so we know that he kept one card, but he passes on turn two. I'm like, hmm. Okay. So I just go ahead and play out my Bellinus. I like playing out the Bellinus as opposed to as opposed to like actually playing out the Lord Death Skull. Yes, Bellinus does die to Sleeping Justice, but Bellinus can also make trades that that Lord Death Skull could not. So, like it's a bit of a big, uh, it's a bit of a big deal. Now he passed on three, and I'm like, okay, sure. I, so I top like the Skull Rings. I'm like, oh, nice, 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 nice. So I go ahead and just clock him in the face for two. He plays Fairy Circle on three. You get two fairies, then plays that one fairy. And, and then proceeds to nature's guidance it to bounce his hand and then play another fairy. I'm like, huh, okay, I guess your hand is pretty bad. That's fine, I can abuse that. So here, this turn, I have a lot of different options for things I could do. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of different options for things I could do. Ultimately, what I decided to do is I decided to go ahead and play the Hells and Leisure, and I go ahead and trade here. And now, because my opponent's bricking, this means that this means that whatever you draft is like really fucking greedy, and I need to be able to go fast and kill him. Now, this this particular line was was kind of like controversial. Like I know I know for me personally, I I, I understood what I was going for, but I know a lot of people who were like watching my stream did not. Uh, and you're gonna see me go ahead and actually evolve the skeleton here. Now, the reason why I'm evolving the skeleton is is for two reasons. One, yes, it is true that the skeleton does die to, does die to an evolved fairy. However, there are a lot of different things on the board that he wants to deal with. Now, yes, he can go ahead and can evolve the fairy and then kill it. However, he could most likely probably do the same thing with Lord Death Skull, because like at this point it's it's turn five. Like, what are the odds that he doesn't have a real turn five, right? Now, yes, it is also true that um that if he kills the Reaper, that he'll that he'd be able to like bring back the that I'd be able to bring back the Bellness anyway, and, and it still have a a two one, a one one, sorry, two sorry, one two two, and then two one ones. And that's also true. However, I wanted to facilitate a sort of a sort of scenario. And when she plays out something to value trade, I can then go ahead and get my obviously get my thing back. And then if he played out something that was like a little bit too big that, that required me to use the pinks from Bellness, that the Bellness was already ready to go and that did not have summoning sickness. Additionally, I already have I already have the one one of the house and leisure, so I want to be able to like make a trade that actually makes sense and, and clear something and then lets me get to what I want. However, he concedes here, I'm like, okay, sure. Next game, Hog Champ. Okay, 
So next game is versus Dragoncraft. Now this game, this game was fucking fun. This game was fire. Like actual flames. Like holy crap. Like this game and I think my game four were honestly like I think the scary the scariest of the games I played thus far. Again, my opponent is also A rank or it might be B rank. I don't remember. I I, I just it, either A rank or B rank basically. Anyway, so I have the I have the young Mordecai now. Honestly speaking, I could have kept most of that hand and that would have been fine, sort of. Um, Mordecai is good versus Dragon because Dragon literally they can only they only have Odin, they only have Lightning Glass. That's the only two ways that they actually that they, that they, that they can actually consistently get rid of it. That's it. So once you play it versus them, it's just there. It's just you know it's in like it's in there like somewhere. It's here to stay. Anyway, so the hand that I gets is is significantly better. Gives, gives me a good early hand, so this way I can just mow him down. Like I said, because he's Ramp Dragon, I know I know the I know that I have to go well. I have to go fast but slow at the same time. Like if, if I see that he has like a weak hand, like so, then you know maybe I can speed it up. We see that we go ahead and we check it again. Like I see that he returned two cards, so I'm 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 really curious as to what he kept. Because like I said from last game, my opponent he he did the same thing, but he like proceeded to pass like five turns. So right. Anyway, here my opponent plays Imprison Dragon. Like, huh? Okay, that's uh, that's kind of annoying because I can't clear it. I pick up the bell and it's like, okay, sure. So I could have bumped here and that would have been fine, but I choose not to because there's no, I don't know. I didn't really like it, so I just chose not to. But here he plays the young Feline. I'm like, huh? Okay. Then he plays Dragonite Scholar. I'm like, huh? Okay, sure. So here I go ahead and play up the Lord Death Skull now. Honestly speaking, what I did here was a hella greedy. Like, I mean, like, hella greedy. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to head evolve my lower death skull. To then trade into, I believe, his 4-3. Yeah, I trade into his 4-3. Then I go ahead and go face for 3. Now, this is greedy because the correct play is to... Well, this is, this is subjectively speaking. But, but a but a correct play is to go ahead and to either sack your guys here to trade into that and then kill then kill the flame and then play out and then play out either Bellinus or play out the skeleton ogre. Um or you can go ahead and you can just um Or you can just go ahead and you can just uh, make the evolve and then go face like here or or you can like evolve and then make trades here. And this way you have one one. But I didn't want to do this because I thought he, I thought that he would fuck up. And I kind of, I kind of just like assumed that he would be greedy, and he would assume that he would like, uh, uh, oh, let me go ahead, let me go ahead, and like not read this card, kill it, and then, and then get me the zombie, which is again really greedy, and you know it pays off, it pays off. Like, I'm, am I proud about it? No, not really, but it paid off. So, anyway, he makes a trade here, that's fine. I get my zombie. Yep, he then gets space. I'm like, sure, nice, pop champ, sure, greeds. So I go ahead and actually get the Lord Death Skull back. I'm like, sick. So I go ahead and evolve it again because I top deck like a god and I pick up the Undying Resentment. I'm like, nice, 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 nice. So I go ahead and obviously I'm Undying Resentment that. I go ahead and uh, make the trade there. I play with the Skeleton Knight. I'm like, sure, amazing, amazing. So again, like I said, I'm going fast. Now, things to keep in mind. I have one more Evo left. My deck has a lot of things that are really harder for me to play out unless I have an Evo to go for it. So if this early game gambit does not work, I am in a lot of trouble. Especially if he, especially if he has bombs. Like and bombs are just, you know, things um things are just like really really good. Like for example, like how like Mordecai uh, as, as as I mentioned before is like really really good, or how like Bahamut is really good, you know, things like that if you're like a newer player. But um yeah. So he plays the uh, the transmogrified worm. Now for those of you who don't know what transmogrified worm does. If you are an overflower, you get to transform an ally an, an, an ally follower into a dragon. Now I think he just thought he was an overflow. I'm not really sure. Maybe that might have also just been the best card he had to play, but yeah. So he plays it out, doesn't get the dragon, I'm like nice. He kills the Lord Death Skull immediately, I'm like, nice, nice. So I would have waited to kill the Lord Death Skull. Alright, so I so it right, so that was a misplay from his part. I would have actually killed the Skeleton Knight first, and then killed the Lord Death Skull. This way, you win a 50-50 because, like, you know they have to, you know they have to, yeah, you know they have to kill the Skeleton Knight. However, you also know that when you that when you have a that when you have a six-four in play, and I only have I only have four four power, or sorry, when I only have three power in play, that um that I'm like not gonna be able, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do as much with it. And if it had landed this way, he would be fucked. 
Like, because I, I literally get to kill a 6-4 for free and then develop whatever I want. But here, I pick up the Young Serpus. I'm like, nice, let's go. Pog Champ. Easy top decks. So I go ahead and use the Young Coco to go ahead and trade. Like I said, I, I, re I realized that my hand, I, yeah, I realized at this point that my hand needs, requires me to slow down, so I just go, you know, I opt to slow down. But here he plays Phoenix Shoes, so I'm like, shit, maybe I should have kept going. Cause my hand is garbage. My hand, like, I need Ectra here. Otherwise my hand is garbage. But here he plays Sky Dragon Ethica, I'm like, nice. So, once you play Phoenix Shoes, you do not need mana anymore. I don't know why he did this. I would have, I, I honestly would have just like read it and just like not, and just like not done anything else. Although, I guess he just has to be afraid of Ektar, cause Ektar will in fact kill him right from the spot, so. So he gets one more mana, I'm like, okay, not bad, not bad. Epic, you know, putting in that work, you know, flames. Alright, so here, I'm like, okay. Well, the hand that I have is a very, very anti-meta hand. I can kill every single unit he plays. However, things to keep in mind. If Satan comes down, I can't do jack shit versus Satan. I will lose the game. If, um, if Polly Roar comes down, I have the Odin. Which means I cannot use Odin at all, no matter what, because I do not want to get rolled by Polyworth, because I, my deck has no wards. It, like the only word, the only word the deck had was like was like Ding Dong. So I have to be very, very careful from the spot. So this turn, I play Spirit Cycle. I then go ahead and play the Bonus because I need I need to draw some cards. I then go ahead and use the Mimi as removal. So then go ahead and go face. I believe I, I believe I choose self welfare. Okay, no, no, I, I choose to just go and play it safe. Yes, yeah, so I pick up the Ding Dong. I'm like, cool, nice, amazing. We found a ward. That's good. So this turn, my opponent plays Zernitra. I'm like, okay, that's not bad. I can do Zernitra easy. Easy bake oven. And then he plays Shurval. I'm like, shit, that's scary. So now, the hand that he had that I could have outgranded, I, it's, it's really hard for me to outgrind Jer Jerva Swings. Like, I can do it, but it's hard as hell. But unfortunately for me, I lose the die roll. Yeah, like, I, I would have I preferred for it to land either here or on the Jerva itself, but that's fine. So I go ahead and play, play up the Young Foul Tempest. I'm like, okay, sure. I get a trigger on my spirit cycle. I'm like, nice, nice, nice. And then I go ahead and I just use Odin here. Now I use Odin because yes, I could have used the, I could have played the Skeleton Ogre and used the Evolve, but I think I need my last Evolve to do something else. So I'll go ahead and just play it this way. I believe I also can play up the Skeleton Ogre. And I just evolve and go face because like th there is no there is no me winning a grind uh, a me winning a grind game at this point. I, I just have to go fast and just like smash him. Just I, I just have to hope that that's good enough. Now here I pick up a grave desecration. I'm like nice, sick. So now I get a lot of now I get a lot of value. So for those of you who don't know, there's actually a, a very very sick interaction with grave desecration as well as spirit cycle. So with spirit cycle you get additional triggers on it once uh, whenever you perform necromancy. Um, and then like the, the uh, yeah, so just like let you like draw it lets you like draw like two cards uh, per turn continuously as long as, you, as long as you're able to feed necromancy into it. And great discretion as long as you have four shadows at, at the end of your opponent's turn, you get a zombie. You get uh you get a zombie for four necromancy, which then feeds your spirit cycle. So you can so you can indefinitely draw cards and then just have like constant gas going. It's a very very strong two card combo that we did not get to see much of in rotation, but it is actually well it was sick in take two. Anyway. Here, he plays that Dark Angel Olivia. I'm like, okay, that's scary. That's really scary because he still has big boys I can play. He then plays that Genesis Dragon. I'm like, okay, all right. Uh, that's scary because he can actually get the reward. So this Ding Dong actually actually did actually had ma yeah, actually had major dividends for me here because this um because otherwise I would have taken nine to the face from a Genesis Dragon. That's that's scary, right? Anyway, but here he chokes. He makes some trades. I would have gone well. I think I would have gone face actually. Yeah, I, I would have gone face probably. Um, just cause like, if you win the one and three, you're not dead. Although if you lose, if you lose the one and three, you are, yeah, if you lose the one and three, you are dead. Oh, in, in his case, it's a two and three. You have to win the two and three. And in my case, it, it's a one and three. Um, but he was still very, very favorite, very, very favorite to win the role. But he just, he chooses not to, and you know, that's, that's fair. You know, that's fine. I, I can, I can respect that. But that's going to come back to bite him in the ass. So here, I have the young Voices of Resentment. So Voices of Resentment, very, very powerful. As you see here, it allows me to go ahead and clear up two units. Voice of Resentment, when you pay the enhance, the enhance is eight. Your ghosts that you get from it, they have Bane. So you like, so you can use this as, as both Reach, as well as just Storm Damage, as we see here. So I go ahead and use them to go, ahead and, to go ahead and clear this off. Now, I actually would have had Lethal if I had, if I one, had the board space to play this, and then two, wasn't, wasn't like screwed over by enhance, by, by like enhanced costs and things like that. Anyway, so here I go ahead and I go face. And I'm and out of this turn I'm setting up lethal. The reason the way I'm setting up lethal is that like 
this, uh, sorry, so even if it's a slash, right, this is, and this is guaranteed to die 100% because of Jericho, right? I have, I have the Grave Desecration to come out next turn to get me two zombie, to get me, um, to get me the zombie, and I have the voice of something in the back to go ahead and get me the two storm damage. So here he plays that dragon so I'm like, okay, that's not scary. He plays the Ifa, that Ifa is scary. He then plays a drag he, did the, yeah, he then plays a Dragoon Scyther, I'm like, okay, sure. Now here he makes an interesting play. I don't know how to, I don't know how I felt about this, but I actually did not like it though. Um so what he's trying to do here is that when you have Jerva out, your Scyther can either be a two damage removal well, so your, your Scyther, all right, so once you have Jerva out, your opponent, only, your opponent only has one creature, your Scyther reads three mana, deal deal five damage to your opponent. And that's, you know, that's cool and all, but I would have, I would have thrown on the Evo onto the, onto the Ifa, just simply just because, you know, the Ifa is, is really, it's really just sticky at five HP and on a vault, well, at five, yeah, at five HP, it's hard for me to kill it. It's very, very hard for me to go up my to kill it, but that's fine. It's neither here nor there. It does not matter because, you know. We, we got there. We got there. It was scary as hell, but we got there. The young Ding Dong putting in the work. Putting in the work. Words matter, man. Words matter. Anyway, so then we play the voices and we just like kill him. We're just like, he's dead. He's done so. Yeah, like, but this game was terrifying. Actually terrifying, but it was really cool. It was really cool. Uh, if my opponent had, if my opponent had maybe like a little bit more gas, we could have died. We definitely could have died. Uh, also, if I didn't just have, you know, the voices in the back as well as the Grave Desecration, like, I, I could've lost. I could've lost just because, like, it's very, very hard to outgrind Jerva and Storm units and also, uh, Olivia Evos and things like that. But we are able to do it. Uh, but yeah, like, so this was, like, Game 1 and Game 2. I will have Game 3 and Game 5 for you guys tomorrow. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Go ahead and hit the subscribe and let me know what you think about the Take 2 GP so far. Do you guys like it? Do you guys hate it? If so, you know, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye, friends.